The Principality of Galicia Volhynia, or Kingdom of Ruthenia, was a state in the regions of Galicia and Volhynia of present day Ukraine that was formed after the conquest of Galicia by the Prince of Volhynia, Roman the Great, with the help of Leszek the White of Poland. Roman the Great united the principalities of Halic and Volhynia into a state that existed from 1199 to 1349. Along with Novgorod and Vladimir Suzdal, it was one of the three most important powers to emerge from the collapse of Kievan Rus. After the enormous destruction wreaked by the Mongol invasion of Kievan Rus in 1239-41, Prince Danilo Romanovich was forced to pledge allegiance to Batu Khan of the Golden Horde in 1246. He strove to rid his realm of the Mongol yoke, however, by a formal orientation to Western Europe and by attempting, unsuccessfully, to establish military alliances with other European rulers. The Polish conquest of the kingdom in 1349 ended its vassalage to the Golden Horde. Western Galicia Volhynia extended between the rivers San and Wietz in what is now southeastern Poland, while eastern territories covered the Pripyat marshes and upper southern Bug in modern-day Ukraine. During its time, the kingdom was bordered by Black Rus, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the Principality of Turov Pinsk, the Principality of Kiev, the Golden Horde, the Kingdom of Hungary, the Kingdom of Poland, the Principality of Moldova, and the monastic state of the Teutonic Knights. History Tribal area In pre-Roman times the region was populated by various tribes, including the Lugi, Goths, and Vandals. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the area was populated by West Slav people, identified with a group called Lendians. Around 833 the West Slavs became part of the Great Moravian State. Upon the invasion of the Hungarian tribes into the heart of the Great Moravian Empire around 899, the Lendians of the area found themselves under the influence of the Hungarian Empire. The whole area was inhabited by White Croats and called White Croatia. The capital of the duchy was Stilsko. In 955 the area seems to have constituted part of the Bohemian state. Around 970 it was included in the Polish state. The area was mentioned in 981, when Vladimir the Great of Kiev in Rus took over on his way into Poland. He founded the city of Vladimir and later Christianized the locals. The area returned to Poland in 1018 and in 1031 was retaken by Rus. The territory was settled by the East Slavs from the early Middle Ages and in the 12th century. The Rurikid Principality of Halilic was formed there by descendants of Vladimir. It merged at the end of the 12th century with the neighboring Principality of Volhynia into the Principality of Galicia Volhynia, which existed for a century and a half. Rise and Apogee Volhynia and Galicia had originally been two separate Rurikid principalities, assigned on a rotating basis to younger members of the Kievan dynasty. The line of Prince Roman the Great of Vladimir in Volhynia had held the Principality of Volhynia, while the line of Yaroslav Osmo Mice held the Principality of Halic. Galicia Volhynia was created following the death in 1198 or 1199 of the last Prince of Galicia, Vladimir II Yaroslavich. Roman acquired the Principality of Galicia and united his lands into one state. Roman successors would mostly use Halic as the designation of their combined kingdom. In Roman's time Galicia Volhynia's principal cities were Halic and Volodymyr in Volhynia. In 1204 he captured Kiev. Roman was allied with Poland, signed a peace treaty with Hungary and developed diplomatic relations with the Byzantine Empire. At the height of his reign he briefly became the most powerful of the Rus princes. He married the niece of the Byzantine Emperor Alexios III, for whom Galicia was the main military ally against the Cumans. The relation with Byzantium helped to stabilize Galicia's relations with the Rusian population of the Lower Dniester and the Lower Danube. In 1205 Roman turned against his Polish allies, leading to a conflict with Leszek the White and Conrad of Masovia. 
Roman was subsequently killed in the Battle of Zawitost, and his dominion entered a period of rebellion and chaos. Thus weakened, Galicia Volhynia became an arena of rivalry between Poland and Hungary. King Andrew II of Hungary styled himself Rex Galiciae Lodomerii, Latin for King of Galicia and Vladimir in Volhynia, a title that later was adopted in the Habsburg Empire. In a compromise agreement made in 1214 between Hungary and Poland, the throne of Galicia Volhynia was given to Andrew's son, Columban of Vladimiria, who had married Leszek the White's daughter, Salome. In 1221, Mstislav Mstislavich, son of Mstislav Rostislavich, liberated Galicia Volhynia from the Hungarians, but it was Daniel Romanovich, son of Roman, who formed a real union of Volhynia and Galicia. In 1239 and 1242 he captured Kiev, attempting to become the Grand Prince of all Rus, but he lost the city the first time after a few weeks. The second after a year, Danilo defeated the Polish and Hungarian forces in the Battle of Yaroslav and crushed their ally Rostislav Mikhailovich, son of the Prince of Chernigov, in 1245. He also strengthened his relations with Batu Khan by traveling to his capital Sarai and acknowledging, at least nominally, the supremacy of the Mongol Golden Horde. After meeting with Batu Khan, Danilo reorganized his army along Mongol lines and equipped it with Mongolian weapons. Although Danilo himself maintained the traditional attire of a Rus prince, Danilo's alliance with the Mongols was merely tactical. He pursued a long-term strategy of resistance to the Mongols. In 1245, Pope Innocent IV allowed Danilo to be crowned king. Danilo wanted more than recognition, commenting bitterly that he expected an army when he received the crown. Although Danilo promised to promote recognition of the Pope to his people, his realm continued to be ecclesiastically independent from Rome. Thus Danilo was the only member of the Rurik dynasty to have been crowned king. Danilo was crowned by the papal legate Topizo de Mezzano in Dora Heich in 1253 as the first king of all Rus. In 1256 Danilo succeeded in driving the Mongols out of Volhynia, and a year later he defeated their attempts to capture the cities of Lusk and Volodymyr Vilinskaya. Upon the approach of a large army under the Mongolian general Borolde in 1260, however, Danilo was forced to accept their authority and to raise the fortifications he had built against them. Under Danilo's reign, Galicia Volhynia was one of the most powerful states in East Central Europe. Literature flourished, producing the Galician Volhynian Chronicle. Demographic growth was enhanced by immigration from the West and the South, including Germans and Armenians. Commerce developed due to trade routes linking the Black Sea with Poland, Germany, and the Baltic Basin. Major cities, which served as important economic and cultural centers, included Lvov, Vladimir in Volhynia, Gallic, Cum, Peramish, Droichin, and Terebovlia. Galicia Volhynia was important enough that in 1252 Danilo was able to marry his son Roman to the heiress of the Austrian duchy in the vain hope of securing it for his family. Another son, Schwan, married a daughter of Mindaugas, Lithuania's first king, and briefly ruled that land from 1267 to 1269. At the peak of its expansion, the Galician Volhynian state contained not only southwestern Rus lands, including Red Rus and Black Rus, but also briefly controlled the Brodnasai on the Black Sea. After Danilo's death in 1264, he was succeeded by his son Lev, who moved the capital to Lviv in 1272 and for a time maintained the strength of Galicia Volhynia. Unlike his father, who pursued a Western political course, Lev worked closely with the Mongols, in particular cultivating a close alliance with the Tatar Khan Nogai. Together with his Mongol allies, he invaded Poland. However, although his troops plundered territory as far west as Racer Boers, sending many captives and much booty back to Galicia, Lev did not ultimately gain much territory from Poland. 
Lev also attempted, unsuccessfully, to establish his family's rule over Lithuania. Soon after his brother Shvano ascended to the Lithuanian throne in 1267, he had the former Lithuanian ruler Vaisvikas killed. Following Shvan's loss of the throne in 1269, Lev entered into conflict with Lithuania. From 1274 to 76 he fought a war with the new Lithuanian ruler Tradenish but was defeated, and Lithuania annexed the territory of Black Ruthenia with its city Navarudic. In 1279, Lev allied himself with King Wenceslaus II of Bohemia and invaded Poland, although his attempt to capture Kraków in 1280 ended in failure. That same year, Lev defeated Hungary in an ex part of Transcarpathia, including the city of Mokachovo. In 1292 he defeated Poland and added Lublin with surrounding areas to the territory of Galicia Volhynia. Decline and fall after Lev's death in 1301, a period of decline ensued. Lev was succeeded by his son Yuri I, who ruled for only seven years. Although his reign was largely peaceful and Galicia Volhynia flourished economically, Yuri I lost Lublin to the Poles in 1302 and Transcarpathia to the Hungarians. From 1308 until 1323 Galicia Volhynia was jointly ruled by Yuri I's sons Andrew and Lev II, who proclaimed themselves to be the kings of Galicia and Volhynia. The brothers forged alliances with King Vladislav I of Poland and the Teutonic Knights against the Lithuanians and the Mongols but the kingdom was still tributary to the Mongols and joined the Mongol military expeditions of Uzbek Khan and his successor, Janabek Khan. The brothers died together in 1323, in battle, fighting against the Mongols, and left no heirs. After the extinction of the Ruriki dynasty in Galicia Volhynia in 1323, Volhynia passed into the control of the Lithuanian prince Lubartis. While the boyars took control over Galicia, they invited the Polish prince Bolslaw Yuri II, a grandson of Yuri I, to assume the Galician throne. Bolslaw converted to orthodoxy and assumed the name Yuri II. Nevertheless, suspecting him of harboring Catholic feelings, the boyars poisoned him in 1340 and elected one of their own, Dmitry Dikko, to lead the Galician state. In winter 1341 Tatars, Ruthenians led by Dietko, and Lithuanians led by Lubartas were able to defeat the Poles. Although they were not so successful in summer 1341, finally, Dietko was forced to accept Polish overlordship as a starost of Halic. After Dietko's death, Poland's King Casimir III mounted a successful invasion, capturing and annexing Galicia in 1349. Galicia Volhynia ceased to exist as an independent state. Danilo's dynasty attempted to gain support from Pope Benedict XII and broader European powers for an alliance against the Mongols, but ultimately proved unable of competing with the rising powers of centralized Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland. Only in 1349, after the occupation of Galicia Volhynia by an allied Polish-Hungarian force, the Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia was finally conquered and incorporated in Poland. This act put an end to the relationship of vassalage between Galicia Volhynia Rus and the Golden Horde. End from 1340 to 1392 the civil war in the region transitioned into a power struggle between Lithuania, Poland, and Hungary. The first stage of conflict led to the signing of a treaty in 1344 that secured the Principality of Peramish for the Crown of Poland, while the rest of the territory belonged to a member of the Gediminas family, Lubartis. Eventually by the mid-14th century, the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania divided up the region between them. King Casimir III took Galicia and Western Volhynia, while the sister state of Eastern Volhynia together with Kiev came under Lithuanian control. 1352-66 
After 1352 most of the Ruthenian voivodeship belonged to the crown of the Polish kingdom, where it remained also after the union of Lublin between Poland and Lithuania. The present-day town of Halilich is situated five kilometers away from the ancient capital of Galicia, on the spot where the river port of the old town was located, and where King Lubartis of Galicia Volhynia constructed a wooden castle in 1367. By the Treaty of the Union of Lublin of 1569, all of the former Principality of Galicia Volhynia became part of Poland. In 1772, Empress Maria Theresa of Austria revived the old Hungarian claims to the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria, using them to justify the participation of Austria in the partitions of Poland. Division Principality of Halilich, Principality of Peramish, Principality of Zvonyhorod, Principality of Trebovlia, Principality of Volhynia, Principality of Lusk, Principality of Doro Obush, Principality of Perasovnithsha, Principality of Bells, Land of Chelm, Land of Berusha, Temporary Principality of Kiev, Principality of Taro, Black Ruthenia, Zakopatia, Rulers. 1199 to 1205 Rome and the Great 1205 to 1214 Political Crisis 1205 to 1206 Euphrosina Angelina as a regent for Daniel of Galicia 1206 to 1211 Children of Igor Sviatoslavich 1210 Rostislav Two of Kiev 1211 to 1212 Ems to Slav the Mute as a regent for Daniel of Galicia 1212 to 1214 Uprising led by a boyar Volodislav Kormilchik 1214-1232 Hungarian occupation, sons of Andrew II of Hungary 1214-1220 Kalumman, son of Andrew 1220 uprising led by Ems to Slav the Prosperous 1220-1232 Andras of Galicia, son of Andrew 1232-1235 Daniel of Galicia, 1235-1238 Children of Michael of Chernigov 1238-1264 Daniel of Galicia, 1264-1269 Dual Power Descendants of Daniel Chapters 1264-1269 Schwan 1264-1300 Levi of Galicia, 1300-1308 Yuri I of Galicia, 1308-1323 Dual Power Descendants of Yuri 1308-1323 3 Lev II of Galicia 1308-1323 Andrew of Galicia 1323-1349 Political Crisis, de facto ruled by a boyard Dimitro Dedko 1323-1325 Galicia, Volodymyr I of Galicia, Volhynia, Lubatus 1325-1340 Yuri II Bolslav 1340 Occupation of Galicia by Casimir III the Great, Start of War 1341-1349 Lubartis 1349 Galicia occupied by Poland and Hungary, Volhynia, Lithuania. Historical role. The Galician Volhynian Chronicle reflected the political program of the Romanovich dynasty ruling Galicia Volhynia. Galicia Volhynia competed with other successor states of Kiev in Rus to claim the Kievan inheritance. According to the Galician Volhynian Chronicle, Galicia Volhynia's King Daniel was the last ruler of Kiev preceding the Mongolian invasion and thus Galicia Volhynia's rulers were the only legitimate successes to the Kievan throne, until the end of Galician Volhynian state. Its rulers advanced claims upon all the land of Rus. The seal of King Yuri I contained the Latin inscription Domini Georgi Regis Rusi, in contrast to their consistent secular or political claims to the Kievan inheritance. Galicia's rulers were not concerned by religious succession. This differentiated them from their rivals in Vladimir Suzdal, who sought to, and attained, control over the Kievan church. Rather than contest Vladimir Suzal's dominance of the Kievan church, Galicia Volhynia's rulers merely asked for and obtained a separate church from Byzantium. 
Galicia Volhynia also differed from the northern and eastern principalities of the former Kievan Rus in terms of its relationship with its western neighbors. King Danilo was alternatively an ally or a rival with neighboring Slavic Poland and partially Slavic Hungary. According to historian George Vernadsky, Galicia, Volhynia, Poland and Hungary belong to the same psychological and cultural world. The Roman Catholic Church was seen as a neighbor and there was much intermarriage between the princely houses of Galicia and those of neighboring Catholic countries. In contrast, the Westerners faced by Alexander, Prince of Novgorod, were the Teutonic Knights and the northeastern Rus experience of the West was that of hostile crusaders rather than peers.